Ready? Yeah? Okay, let's go. Let's go. Come on, Ina. We're at the town ground where Hina have just beat Light Town 4 0. With me, I've got manager Glenn Clarence and assistant manager Steve Hamilton. Now, Glenn, there's, there's winning 4 0, and then there's having a night like tonight where we're warmed up, ready to go. Waiting 15 minutes or so. Now, I know we've been in the opposite position as that, where we've been late for games and things. Obviously, the referee's waiting and waiting and waiting to get the game going. We went 3 0 up in the first 15. Now, for you as manager, job done straight away. Would that be right? No. A team like Lyle, you've still got to be cautious to the 95th minute, Tony. Um, so, yeah, I think we blew them away in that 15 minutes. We were excellent, we were ruthless, we were in the faces. Um, but it, it wasn't comfortable. After that, so even at 3-0, it's not comfortable. You know what lie you're going to bring to the table. So we had to match that and keep matching that. And I know after you score three goals in 15 minutes, the fans want you to go and score another three in the next 15 minutes. It was about winning the game and keeping a clean sheet. So I thought we managed the game after that really well. And the second half was coping again with what they were going to bring because we knew they were going to be a threat. And then the next goal was vital, even at 3-0 against the side like lie. So... We didn't have to go and get the next goal, we just needed to make sure they didn't get it. That didn't mean we camped in our own half, it just meant we were disciplined positionally. And again, similar to last Wednesday night, a lot of young lads were, were men tonight, and the men were superb. So, very good performance, very good result. Um, can't really say much more than that, Tony, can I? It's just a shame that we haven't played like that all season, we'd be uh, where they are, top three pushing for something. So. Credit to him, we're building something, we've said that, we had a bit of a blip on Saturday at Roaster, um, but I don't think the officials helped and the pitch, the pitch certainly didn't help on Saturday, but you can't blame our pitch tonight, credit to the ground staff, absolutely superb surface tonight for the time of the year, and we want to play football, and we certainly did. That's excellent, obviously um, Hamo Glenn's just said that at 3-0 the next goal was vital. <coughs> About five minutes, in fact, probably not even five minutes into the second half, for us blowing his whistle and giving them a penalty. Yeah. Now, a lad that has certainly been in quality form, I'd say, since the start of January, has got down and made what is a great save for the penalty. Turning point in the game, do you think? Well, uh, I don't know about I don't know about turning point, but it was a great penalty save. And yet, you, I mean, you fancy them. I mean, all the way through the game, they never know when they beat uh, Lysando. And they're probably, I mean, there's a lot of sides in this league like that, but they are probably up there with them all, that they just keep playing. And they were, you know, when we got the fourth, they still keep playing. They still want to get involved in things. They never, ever roll over. Um, but, uh, yeah, in answer to your question, uh, great penalty save, great penalty save. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it is a big point in there. Um, I don't know whether it would have uh, gotten back in the game as, as such, but uh, great penalty save from, from Joe. But 11 man of the matches out there today, as, as Glenn uh, said earlier, you know, the men stood up <coughs> and, uh, and you young lads have, have really come to the fore tonight because it's quite easy to get bullied off the park, you, you know, by, by a side like lie. And they would have tried it and, you know, they, they left the boot in on one or two and uh, lads weren't bothered. Uh, so, uh, yeah, tremendous. I don't know what I'll say to you, but they were great performance. Good job!
I know it's not the first time, Tony. I think in, in patches it didn't happen, but I think credit to the referee. And all to that, the referee was strong. He he didn't fall for a lot of the... What's the word? History, histrionics? What's the word? I don't know. Something like that. Spell. Anyway, someone spell it. Yeah, I think the referee was strong, and that's what we needed tonight, especially with a young side that wanted to play football. And That was our concern going out there before the game, saying, look, young lads playing at a decent level, potentially going to go and play high when they're older. They've got, they've got to get used to this, and... They did, they come through with flying colours. So and touching on Joey McCormack, yeah, he's, he's made the penalty save, but he made a couple of great one on one saves as well. So in the dressing room we give Joey a bit of stick, but can't give him stick tonight. Four credit to Joe. So I agree with that I'm eleven man of the matches, but Joe's up there and we've won four 0 so that tells you a story. Well done Joseph. Okay, just again touching, I know we've scored four goals tonight. Now those four goals, not one of them's come from a striker. Yeah. Now there's a lot of teams that rely on a centre forward or a striker to go and score 35 goals like the lad has done for Lytown. It's amazing how when you mark someone out of a game that becomes a nil. But it's one of those where we've got a centre half who scored two great strikes, looping one into the top corner and then great volley from Rolo and then Brownie and Nick both both managing to get on the score sheet. Now for us as a team doesn't that show the great contribution that we've got right across from the very back line to the boys at the front? It does. I think Nick's goal was a great move. Um, for those that saw it, I think Brad, Brownie's goal was superb. The, the build-up play, Joe Naylor's done excellent down the left. Joe Naylor, Jay, Jay Cooper's done excellent down the left-hand side and delivered across, and Brownie's got to the back post. Great goal, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, Rollo's first, I think the keeper's off the line, but as a centre half, you take that. But his, his second goal's up there. Anyone would. A striker would be happy with that one. So we, we certainly didn't sign Rolo for his goal scoring ability, but on that, he's, he's been an absolute rock at this club since he joined. Mm. Uh, we've tried to get him for a few years and we've spoken about that before. He's, he's been immense and he was very happy to score that second goal and everyone in the crowd was happy for him. It was, it was a great goal, fair play to him. But to answer, answer your question, Tony, I'm not bothered who scores. Just want to win a game football, don't you? Of you course. can come on and score for me, I, I don't care, just win the game. I'm working Saturday, sorry mate. Good. <laughs> Hamo just again touching on Saturday, Coventry Sphinx at home. Now I think we lost 1-0 at their place in a game that had probably three chances in the whole 90. It was horrible, it was scrappy. Um, yeah, we've got Healy Town in great form. Looking forward to playing a side that's not far behind us, I don't think, in the table. What we're looking forward to. Well, there's just a big focus on us at, the, uh, at this moment in time on working hard and making sure that's the focus that we work on that we get into the game early and, and, and that's what we always remind them before the game and, and, and at half-time. So that's what we're looking forward to. Um, <clears throat> there's no easy games in this league, wherever they are. You know, and it, and it, and it I won't say it flatters a little bit tonight, 4-0, but, uh, you know, 4-0 against Lyon, you don't see that very often. Yeah. I, I certainly can't recall that uh, anywhere throughout the season. But it comes down to hard work, and uh, they've certainly come out of the blocks uh, at the start of the uh, at the start of the game. You know, when it was delayed, they were late on the, on the coach. We'd started the warm up. We stopped the warm up. You're thinking, yeah, is it going to disrupt us? No. Credit to them all. They're absolutely focused. Rollo was reminding them in there of the responsibilities as well, and, uh, and and they did. They came out of the blocks, and and we sort of blew them away really in 15, 20 minutes with some great goals. But the intensity of the play, I'm thinking, can we keep this up for 90 minutes? Well, they answered us because yes, they did. You know, we made a few changes in the last five, 10 minutes, but the intensity, and that's that's what's key to it because if you've got ability and you work hard, it, the the cream always comes to the top. And um, I don't think that we've not. We've never tossed it off, or we've never not worked hard. But all of a sudden now, we're, we're, that's it's it's just a given in them. It's just a given that they they go out there and they work hard, and they'll 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 get their just desserts um, every single game if they work hard like that. You know, Brownie he's just an he's an absolute engine in there, and Josh Craddock, who you'd think is, you know, just a good footballer, he gets involved. And uh, and I say they've they've been absolutely superb in the last 
six or seven weeks that, that they really have. But uh, it's unfair to pick anybody out because tonight everybody's everybody's worked, everybody's put a shift in. They'll all know in the morning that they've had a game of football. Yeah, of course. All right, well, on that note, thank you both for your time tonight. Well done. <laughs> Food, then bad. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He's got both of the footballs. He's got it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Liam. Yeah.